for your Sunday night dramatic entertainment, we bring you Armchair Theatre. You. What are you doing? Nothing. I've been calling you from upstairs. Didn't you hear me call you? You see my tie? Oh, I'll say I'll have to put the flag out. What do you mean? Cleaning your shoes out, but I'll have to put the flag out, won't I? What are you looking for? My tie, the, uh, the blue one, the striped one. The bulb's gone in Grandma's room. Has it? That's what I was calling you about. I went and switched on the light and the bulb had gone. Oh, but aren't those your good trousers? What are you putting your good trousers on for? Where's my tie? You know my tie, the blue one? You know the one I mean? The blue stripe one. I, uh, I gave it to you this morning, didn't I? <laughs> what do you want your tie for? I don't want to put it on. I asked you to press it for me this morning. I gave it to you this morning before I went to work, didn't I? Well, your dinner will be ready soon. You can look for it afterwards. Lay the table. There's a good boy. Well, why should you look for it afterwards? You know what it is now. You've got five minutes. Go down to the cellar, Albert. Get a bulb and put it in Grandma's room. Go on. I don't know why you keep on calling that room Grandma's room. I've been dead ten years. Albert. That's yeah, just a junk room, that's all it is. Albert, that's no way to speak to your grandma. You know that as well as I do. I'm not saying a word against grandma. You'll upset me in a minute you go on like that. Well, I'm not going on about anything. Yes, you are. Now, why don't you go down to the cellar, get a bulb and put it in Grandma's room. By the time you come down, I'll have your dinner on the table. Well, I can't go down to the cellar. I've got my best trousers on. I've got a white shirt on. Oh, dressing up tonight, aren't you? Dressing up, cleaning your shoes. Anybody would think you were going to the Ritz. Well, I'm not going to the Ritz. What do you mean, you're not going to the Ritz? Well, what do you mean? The way you said you're not going to the Ritz sounded like you were going somewhere else. Well, I am. You're going out? Well, you know I'm going out. I told you I was going out. I told you last week. I told you this morning. Look, Mum, where's my time? I've got to have my time. I'm late already. Now, come on, Mum, where do you put it? What about your dinner? Look, I've told you, I haven't got... Now, oh, wait a minute, here it is. You can't wear that tie, I haven't pressed it yet. Yeah, look at it. Of course you have, it's beautifully pressed, it's fine. Where are you going? Look, look, Mum, I've told you, honestly, three times. Honestly, three times I told you I had to go out tonight. No, you didn't. I thought you were joking. Well, look, I'm not going... Look, I'm going to Mr. King's, I've told you, you just don't believe me. You're going to Mr. King's? Yeah. Well, Mr. Ryan's leaving, you know, Ryan, don't you? Well, he's been with the firm for years, anyway, he's leaving, and Mr. King's giving a sort of party for him at his... Well, no, no, it's not exactly a party. Well, no, it's not a party at all, it's... Well, anyway, you know, we're, we're all invited. Uh, I mean, everyone else is going, I've got to go. I mean, I don't want to go, but I, I've got to go. Well, I don't know. Look, look, Mama, look, I won't be late. Look, look, Mum, I, I don't want to go. I mean, I, I'd much rather stay here with you. Would you? Well, you know I would. Who wants to go to Mr. King's party? <laughs> we were going to have our game of cards. Yeah, we can't have it now, can we? Put a bulb in Grandma's room, Albert. Look, Mum, look, I can't go down to the cellar. I've got a white shirt on. Look, there's no light in the cellar either. I'll be pitch black in five minutes looking for those bulbs. I told you to put a light in the cellar. I told you yesterday. Yeah, well, I can't do it now, can I? If we had a light in the cellar, we could see where those bulbs are. You don't expect me to go down to the cellar. Look, I don't know why we keep bulbs in the cellar. Your father would turn in his grave if he heard you raise your voice to me. You're all I've got, Albert. I want you to remember that. I haven't got anyone else. I want you to bear that in mind. Oh, I'm sorry I raised my voice. Oh, I've got a gun. Albert. What? I want to ask you a question. What? Well, what? Are you leading a clean life? Clean life? You're not leading an unclean life, are you? Well, what are you talking about, Mum? 
You're not going messing about with girls, are you? You're not going to go messing about with girls tonight. Well, don't be so ridiculous. Ask to me, Albert. I'm your mother. Look, I don't know any girls. Well, if you're going to the firm's party, there'll be girls there, won't there? Girls from the office? I don't like them, any of them. You promise. Promise what? That you won't upset your father. My father? Well, well how can I upset my father? You know, you're always talking about upsetting people who are dead. Albert. You don't know how you hurt me. You don't know the hurtful way you've got speaking of your poor father like that. But he is dead. He's not. He's living in here. And this is his house. Look, Mum, look, I won't be late and I won't mess about with it. Uh, well, but what about your dinner? It's nearly ready. Look, Celia and Ked, you're waiting for me. I, I told you not to cook dinner this morning, but... But just because you never listen, huh? But what am I going to do while you're out? I can't go into Grandma's room because of the light, and I can't go down to the cellar in the dark. We were going to have a game of cards. It's Friday night, Albert. What about our game of rummy? <laughs> Give us a cheese roll as well, will you? Make it two. Make it two. Two cheese rolls. What about sausages? Fresh pork sausages. Want a sausage catch? <laughs> no, thanks. Two cheese rolls. Now, what about these sausages? Do you want them or don't you? No, nah, just rolls, mate. Two cheese, two rolls makes one and eightpence. There'll be plenty to eat at the party. Yeah, I'll bet. Hey, your mate was by here not long ago. Which mate? He had a cup of tea, didn't he, Fred? Sitting there he was, on the bench. Said as how he was going home to change, but to tell you he'd be back. Oh. Not gone more than about uh, 45 minutes. One and eight from half a dollar leaves you ten pennies. All right. Anyway, told me to tell you when I see you, he'll be coming back. He'll oh, coming thank you very much. Yeah. Well, I hope it won't be long. I don't want to miss the booze. You're thinking about much there, do you? Yes, he was sitting there. Who was? Your mate. Sitting there he was. Took his cup of tea and went and sat down. Didn't he, Fred? Yes. Oh, sat there looking very compressed with himself. Very what? Compressed. I thought he was looking very compressed, didn't you, Fred? Depressed. He means depressed. I wonder, what about that game on Saturday, eh? You were going to tell me. You haven't told me yet. What game, Fulham? Now, the firm. Firm's got teams. So you play on Saturdays. Who'd you play? Other firms. You boys in the team, are you? Yeah, I've been off sick. I didn't play last week. Sick, eh? You want to try one of my sausages, don't you, Henry? Hey, Paul. <laughs> what happened with the game? Then? Well, when you couldn't play, Pitney moved Albert to the left back. The left arm? Well, now he's the left arm. I said to Gidney, I said to him, look here, I said. Listen, why did you go with left back, Gidney? He said, no, I'm too valuable to set the half. He didn't, did he? Yeah. Well, you know I was on the right wing, didn't you? Connor. Who, uh, Tony Connor? You know Connor. What's the matter with you? You played against Connor yourself. Oh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Mickey Connor. Yeah. I thought you'd given up the game. Well, you're talking about he plays for the printing works. Plays outside right for the printing works. He's a good ball player, that Connor. Look, I said to Albert before the kickoff. Yeah. Connor's on the right wing. I said, play your normal game. I taught him six times before the kickoff. What's the good of him playing his normal game? He's a left half. He's not a left back. Yeah, but he's a defensive left half, isn't he? That's why I got him to play his normal game. You don't want to worry about Connor, I said. He's a good ball player, but he's not all that good. Ah, oh, he's good. Well, no one's denying he's good, but he's, he's, he's not all that good, is he? I mean, he's not tip-top, you know what I mean? He's fast. He's fast, but he's not, he's not all that fast, is he? Well, no, not all that fast. What about Levy? Was Levy fast? Well, Levy was a sprinter. He was a dasher, Levy. All he knew was run. He could move. Yeah, but look how Albert played him. He cut him off. He played him out of the game. And Levy's faster than Connor. He's not as clever, though. Well, what about Foxall? Who? Oh, Lou Foxall. Now, you're talking about Lou Fox. I'm talking about Sandy Foxall. Oh, the winger. Sure. He was a very smart ball player, Foxall. But what did Albert do? He played his normal game. He waited for him. He let him come. And, and Connor's not as clever as Foxall. Oh, he's clever, though. Go oh, blimey. I know he's clever. He's not as clever as Foxall, though, is he? Trouble is with Connor, he's fast too, isn't he? But if Albert would have played his normal game, he played a game foreign to him. How many did Connor get? Connor, he made three and scored two. No wonder he's depressed, old Albert. Yeah, he was very depressed after the game, I can tell you. 
And of course, Gidney was after him, of course. You know Gidney. That work. Uh, two teas, mate. Yes! Sitting over there where you was, wasn't he, Fred? Mm. Oh, looking very compressed with himself. Slender bloke, ain't he? Slender, yeah. yeah. Albert, where are you going? Oh. Your dinner's ready. I'm sorry, Mama, I haven't got time to have it. Oh, look at your suit. You're not going out with your suit in that state, are you? Well, what's the matter with it? It needs a good brush. That's what's the matter with it. You can't go out like that. Come on out here and I'll give you the good oh, brush. No, it's all right. Come on. Now, turn around. No, 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 stand still. Oh, you can't go out and disgrace me, Albert. If you've got to go out, you've got to look nice. There, that's better. I didn't tell you what I made for you, did I? I made it specially. I made shepherd's pie tonight. Look, Mum, the, the tie's all right. Ta-da. Albert, wait a minute. Where's your handkerchief? What handkerchief? You haven't got a handkerchief in your breast pocket. Well, that doesn't matter, does it, Mum? Doesn't matter. Of course it matters. Just a minute. Here you are. It's a nice, clean one. Oh, you mustn't let me down, you know. You've got to be properly dressed. Your father was always properly dressed. You never saw him out without a handkerchief in his breast pocket. You always looked like a gentleman. We were there. We'll give him five minutes. <laughs> I bet his mum's company there for him, eh? Yeah. You ever met her, Seely? Who? His mother. Yeah. What's she like, eh? She's all right. All right, is she? I told you, I just said she was all right. No, what I mean is, he always gets a bit niggly when she's mentioned, doesn't he? A bit touchy, you notice that? Yeah. Well, why's that, then? I don't know. What are you asking me for? Well, I don't know. I thought you might sort of... Well, I mean, you know him better than I do, don't you? Of course, he doesn't let much slip, does he, old Albert? No, not much. He's a bit deep, really, isn't he? Yeah, he's a bit deep. Secretive. What do you mean, secretive? What are you talking about? Well, I was just saying he's secretive. What are you talking about? What do you mean he's secretive? Well, you said yourself he was deep. I said he was deep. I didn't say he was secretive. Nice bit of clobby you got on there? Yeah, very fair, very fair. Did you like a glove? Oh, come on, catch a 36 round the corner. Oh, wait a minute, I, I don't think I feel like going, actually. What are you talking about? I just don't feel like it, that's all. What, with all that drink laid on? No, no, you know, I've got a bit of a headache. Hey, that's the bloke. It's the bloke got it here before, ain't it, Fred? Here. I've given your message, son. Eh? Hey? Yes? Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, sir, thanks. Ah. Yeah. Oh, didn't I? You did, you did, mate. Well, come on, what's going on? You're coming all what? Oh, well, you know. Don't you know who'll be there tonight, Albert? Who? Joyce. Joyce? So what? And Eileen. What about it? And Betty. Betty will be there. They'll all be there. Betty? Who's Betty? Betty, what do you mean? You don't know Betty? Well, there's no girl in the office called Betty. Betty. The new Betty. The dark one. The one that came in last week. The little one in the corner. Oh, is her name Betty? I thought it was... Betty. Her name's Betty. I've been calling her Hetty. Well, anyway, she'll be there. She's raring to go, that one. You go, then I'll mess about. Ah, oh, but what's the matter with you, mate? It's wine, women and song tonight. You have a big day, don't I? Wasn't you in there? You frightened Gidney will be after you, then, because of the game. What do you mean? Go on, everyone has a bad game, Albert. Yeah, they do, don't they? I played against Connor myself once. He's tricky. He's a very tricky ball player. Yeah, clever player, Connor. What's Gidney got to do with it, Kedge? Well, you know what he is. What? Well, he's captain of the team for a bang off, isn't he? You think... Ah, scrub round it, will you? No, lay. You think... You think I'll frighten the Gidney, do you? I didn't say you were. 
Kidney's all right. What's the matter with Kidney? Yeah, what's wrong? Oh, there's nothing wrong with him. He's a nice bloke. He's a charmer, isn't he? The cream of the cream. Well, are you coming? Or what? Yeah, yeah, all right, I'll come. No, just a minute, I'll get some fags. Anyway. How's your mum, Albert? All right. That's the idea. What do you mean, how's my mum? Oh, well, just asked how she was, that's all. Well, why shouldn't she be? Well, I didn't say she wasn't. Well, she is. Well, that's all right then, isn't it? What are you getting at? I don't know what's the matter with you tonight, Albert. Hello, what's up now? Well, then? kids here suddenly asked how my mother is. Just a friendly question, that's all. Cool, you can't even ask yeah. look how his mother is yeah. now without getting niggly. Well, why is he suddenly asked? Just a friendly question, mate. What's the matter with you? Well, how is she then? She's fine, how's yours? Fine, fine. Mine's fine too. She's great, absolutely great. She's a marvel for her age, my mother is. Of course, she had me very late. Well, what's going on, eh? You coming or what? I'm coming. Bicycle, honestly. Really keeps you up to the mark, you know? Out in the morning, on the bicycle, through the town, air in your lungs, muscles working, you arrive at work. Oh, thank you. You arrive at work fresh, you know what I mean? Uplifted. Not so good in the rain. Oh, clears the cobwebs, refreshes you. Hey, you don't walk <laughs> to work, do you, kidney? Me? I've got the car. Oh, I drive too, of course. But you know, I often think seriously of taking up cycling again. No, 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 I really mean it. I often think very seriously about it. <laughs> Hello, my Nice party, isn't it, Mr. Ryan? You dance like a dream, Betty. Do you know that? Mm, I do. Oh, you do, honest. Like a dream. Like a dream come true. You're just saying that. Well, Kedge looks all right again, doesn't he? What did you say was the matter with him? I'd forgotten. Stomach trouble, Mr. Kedge. Not enough exercise. You must see you get more exercise, kid. You never said a true word, Mr. King. <laughs> Wait, don't look in bad shrimp to me, Mr. King. No, no, I must admit it. Well, you never get to the last lap with that one, I can tell you. Oh, really? <laughs> what are you laughing at, Stokes? What? Well, I'm sorry, I, I thought you were laughing. Well, I, I was laughing, you made a joke. Yes, of course, yes, sorry. Well, uh, we going to win on Saturday, good name? Well, we've got catch back at left back, you know. <laughs> yes, of course. Excuse me. Hey, that's, uh... That's a lovely pair of elastic side shoes you're wearing there, Giddy. Oh, do you think so? Oh, they're the best, the very best, aren't they, Albert? Giddy always wears a nice pair of shoes, didn't he? You notice that. That's one thing I'll say about you, Giddy. You carry your feet well. A mambo. Who's going to die? Oh, come on in. I'll give it a trot. <laughs> Don't you dance, Stokes? Yes, yes, do sometimes. Do you? Well, you will excuse me, won't you? Yes. Well, Ryan, enjoying the party? Nice to see young people enjoying themselves, isn't it? Of course, it's all in your honour, you know, old man. Here, let me fill you up. Let's see. I shall be the eldest man in the office after you've gone. Cheers. No, why should I? Go on, just for a lark. What for? For a lark, just for a lark. You've got an evil mind, you have. No, it'll amuse me, that's all. I feel like being amused. Well, I'm not going to. Well, you wouldn't know how to anyway. Oh, wouldn't I? Now, look, get hold of Eileen. Don't tell her I told you that. I'm going to lead him a dance. Just lead him a dance, that's all. I want to see what he does. I just want to see his reaction. I want to see how he takes it. 
What in front of everyone? In front of... Just talk to him. Talk to him. I don't mean anything else, do I? And what do I get if I do? A toffee apple. Oh, really? Thank you. I'll take you for a ride in the car. Honest. Hello, Mr. Ryan. You join the party? You dance well, don't you? Oh, I was going in for ballet once, you know. Go. Yeah, they offered me the leading part in Rigoletto when I was a boy soprano. Now oh, you're making it. Yeah, my word of honor, honest. Uh, it just irritates me, a bloke like that. I haven't got any time for a bloke like that. Oh, he's just quiet, that's all. Well, see if you can wake him up. <laughs> well, Miss Todd, it hasn't taken you long to get to know everyone, has it? Oh, no, Mr. King. I've taken her under my wing, Mr. King. So I know this. Yes. yes, I've been teaching her all about mortality tables. I told her in case of fire or burglary, commission and damages come to her. Oh, I'd hardly take Kedger's word as gospel, Miss Todd. Oh, you know I've got the best interest of the firm at heart, Mr. King. <laughs> anyway, I'm thinking of moving on. Stay too long in a place, you go dark. After all, with my qualifications, I could go anywhere. Good night, Stokes. What? I was saying, with my qualifications, I could go anywhere. I could go anywhere and be anything. So could I. Could you? But well, what qualifications have you got? Well, I've got a few, you know. Listen, do you know that Chelsea wanted to sign me up a few years ago? They had a scout down to see one of our games. They wanted to sign me up. And I'll tell you another thing. I could turn professional cricketer any day I wanted to, if I wanted to. Then why don't you? I don't want to. Oh, but you look lovely in white. These people who talk about qualifications just makes me laugh, that's all. You're lovely. You're the loveliest thing on four wheels. <laughs> well, let's hope you'll both be in the team yourself soon. You know, I think it's an awfully good thing that we've, uh, that the firm's got a football team and a cricket team too, of course. It, uh, Shows we uh, look on the lighter side of things too, don't you agree? Oh, yes, Mr. King. Yes, Mr. King. Also gives a sense of belonging. You know, work together and play together. Office work can become so impersonal. We like to foster something, something very different. Do you know what I mean? Yes, Mr. King. Yeah. You fond of sailing at all? You're quite welcome to come down to my boat at Pool any uh, any weekend. Do a bit of sailing along the coast. Thank you, Mr. King. Thank you, Mr. King. <laughs> Never know, really, do you? <laughs> Let me fill up your glass, right? Can't have you without a drink, can we? The guest of honor. <laughs> Cheers. You? You enjoying the party, are you? <laughs> Well, what are you sitting here doing about? I'm not doing, I'm just sitting drinking. I feel a bit tired, actually. Why, what have you been doing? Nothing. You just said you were tired. Move up a bit, I'm on the edge. I'm sorry. Hey, mind that, you're squashing me. Oh, squash her, she won't mind. Oh, joy. Now, come on, tell us, what are you tired about? Well, it's just, just work, I suppose. Oh, I've been working, too, and I'm not tired. Then I love work, don't you, Ali? Oh, yes, I love work. Well, I, I'm not tired, really. No, I'm all right, actually. Oh, he looks a bit tired. You've been living it up. Women. Oh, I bet. Female. No. <laughs> oh, my, my best friend. You know, he's not bad looking when you get clothes. Oh, he's quite nice when you get clothes. Well, thank you for the compliment. Have you got a flat of your own? No, have you? Oh, no. You live with your mother, don't you? Yeah. Does she look after you all right, then? Oh, yeah. Look, I've just got to go to the bar. Oh, so oh me too. Well, hello, everyone. I have a gin. Gin, yeah, wait a minute. Could, it, could I have your attention, please? Just for a moment. Yeah. Didn't make much impression, did you? Didn't I? Uh, Stokes, pay attention. Well, uh, what? I guess the the king wants your attention. Our guest of honour, Mr. Ryan. <laughs> Gidney, would you uh, get Kedge out of that corner? <laughs> <laughs> Well, now, as you all know, we're all gathered here tonight to pay tribute to our old friend and colleague, Mr. Ryan. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh sorry. Look at that. Look at that. Well, now, we've all known Mr. Ryan a very long time. I, of course, have known him much longer than anyone here. Boring, so yeah, John. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I'm very glad for your enthusiasm, Mr. Kedge. Your heart, I'm sure, is in the right place. <laughs> but, uh, 
If you just let me uh, propose the toast first, and then the floor is yours. I can with you, well, now, <laughs> well, now, as I was saying, the whole department is here tonight to pay tribute to a man who, from time immemorial, has become, how shall I put it, the very core of our little community. Yeah. Yeah. I can remember, I can remember Mr. Ryan sitting at his very own desk the first time my father brought me down to the office. Oh! Good heaven. Oh, good what is it? What's the matter? Somebody touch me. Somebody touched you? Somebody touched me. What did he do? Touched you? What did he do? What did he do, He took a liberty. Go on, who did? Oh. <laughs> well, what do you think of me for? What are you looking at me for? What did he do? Touch her? Yeah. Where? Well, what are you looking at me for? Look, could we please... Oh, 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 no, wait a minute, this is absolutely ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I'm going. 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 I'm Call me. What are you doing? Let right, go of me, will you? you put in him. Now you keep out of this. Look, will you please settle this down somewhere? We must pay some respect to our guest of honor. We don't even know what he's supposed to do. No, I didn't do anything. We can guess what he did. Look, we're all collected here tonight, Your Honor, Mr. Ryan, to give him some token about affection. You name. Well, what did he do? What's he supposed to have done? She doesn't know what he's talking about. Come on, Eileen. What's he supposed to have done anyway? You mind your own business. You don't suppose she's going to tell you, do you? Hey, look, Alan. Now look, Seely. Why don't you shut up? Now don't you talk to me like that. Don't worry about it. Look, as I was trying to say. Look, Eileen, come and sit down. Here she's up. Hey, Alan. So would you have been Miss Phipps, would you mind composing yourself? Composing myself? Eileen, come and sit down. Boys, don't start it. Well, I'm going anyway. Don't sit it outside. Well, now, as I was trying to say... I'm listening, Mr. King. What? I'm listening. I'm with you. Oh, yes, yes. Thank you, Mr. Kedge. Now, wait a minute, Stokes. What do you want? Well, I haven't been satisfied with your sort of behavior for some time. You know that, don't you? Yeah, well, for instance, there was that stinking, awful game of football you played when you threw the game away last Saturday, besides one or two other things I've got on my mind. You know, Giddy, you're talking I've about... I've told you to keep out of this! I'm going anyway. Now, wait a minute, let's have it out. What do you think you're up to, eh? Now, look. Look, I've told you. What do you think you were doing with that girl? Look, I didn't touch her! Now, look, I'm responsible for that girl. She's a good friend of mine. I... I know her uncle. Do you? You know, you're being so stupid, Gidney. Now, look, Seeley. I can take you any day. You know that, don't you? Go on. Any day. You can take me any day. Any day. Oh, go on then. Go on if you can take oh, me. Silly, no, if he says he can take me, if he can take me any day. Look, Gidney. Goodie, well, look, why don't you go back to the now, look, I was telling you, Albert. Stokes! Good night. Wait a minute. Go back and apologize. What for? For insulting a lady, mate. A lady, something to do with breeding. But I suppose you're too bleating backwards to know anything about I that. I'm talking right out of your hat. Right out the bowler. No one invited you out here, did they? Yeah, well, who invited you? I'm talking to this man on behalf of the firm. Unless I get a satisfactory explanation, I shall think seriously about recommending his dismissal. Oh, get out of my way. Acting will like you? an animal all Move over the place. Out of me. I know your trouble. Oh, yes? Yeah. Sticks out a mile. Does it? Yeah. Well, what's my trouble, then? You're a mother's boy. That's what you are. That's your trouble. You're a mother's boy. Alvin! Oh, what are you doing? Alvin! Oh, 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 what the heaven's name is going on here? What are you creeping upstairs for? Might have been a burglar. What, what, what would I have done then? Creeping upstairs? Like, I'd give anyone a 
That's all. You look a disgrace. What have you been doing? Mucking about with girls. M mucking about with girls, I suppose. D do you know what the time is? I, I fell asleep right in there at the table waiting for you. Oh, I don't know what your father would say coming in at this hour. It's nearly midnight. Uh, drunk, I suppose, in that state. Well, if you want to make a convenience out of your own house, that's your affair. I'm only your mother. I don't suppose that counts for much these days. I'm not saying any more. mucking about with girls, that's your business. Well, you'll have your dinner anyway. You haven't had a single thing to eat all night. I wouldn't mind if you'd better found a nice girl and brought her home and introduced her to your mother. Brought her home for dinner, I'd know you were sincere. If she was a nice girl, a really nice girl, she'd be just like a daughter to me. But you've never brought a girl home here in your life. Ashamed of your mother, I suppose. Come on, it's all dried up. Kept it on a low light. I couldn't even go up to Grandma's room and have a look around because there wasn't any bulb. You might as well eat it. What's the matter? Are you drunk? <laughs> Where have you been? One of those pubs in the West End. Oh, you'll get yourself into trouble if you frequent those places, my boy. I'm warning you. Don't you read the papers? I hope you're satisfied anyway. House in darkness. I wasn't going to go breaking the neck looking in the cellar for one of those bulbs. You come home looking like I don't know what. Anybody would think you gave me a fortune out of your wages. Yes, I don't say anything, do I? You part of our what I'm supposed to manage on. I'm never drunk. Keep a lovely house. I bet none of the boys in your firm's well fed as you are. asking for gratitude, but one thing hurts me, Albert, and I'll tell you what it is. Not for years, not for years have you come up to me and said, Mum, I love you, like you did when you were a little boy. You've never said it without me having to ask you, not since before your father died. Oh, he was a good man. He had high hopes of you, Albert. Never told you about the high hopes he had of you. I don't know what you'd do with all your money. Don't you forget what it cost us to rear you, my boy. Never told you about the sacrifices we made. You wouldn't care anyway. You just wouldn't care. Going out to the sour. If you want to go mucking about with girls, sorts of bits of girls, that's your business. If you're content to leave your own mother alone here till midnight, and there wasn't well anyway. I didn't tell you because I didn't want to upset you. I keep things from you. You're the only one I've got, but what do you care? You don't care, you don't care. Well, the least you can do is eat the dinner I cooked for you, especially for you, it's shepherd pie.
Good evening. What you doing? What you doing out at this time of night? I live just round the corner. Like to? Chilly out here, isn't it? Don't slam the door, shut it gently. Taking your shoes off, you're really making a dreadful noise. Really, I can't bear noisy people. Oh, I know I had one somewhere. I've got a lighter. You can't light a gas fire with a lighter, you burn your fingers. Oh, where are they? This is ridiculous. I die without a fire. I simply die. Oh. <laughs> At last, here we are. This photo is of my little girl. She's staying with friends. Rather fine, isn't she? Very aristocratic features, don't you think? She's at a very select boarding school at the moment, actually, in uh, Hereford. Very near Hereford. I shall be going down for Prize Day shortly. You do look idiotic standing about like that with one shoe on and one shoe off. You're all lopsided. Am I not saying words like that? I didn't. I heard you curse. My legs broke. It's no excuse. What did I I'm say? I'm sorry, I can't bear that sort of thing. It's just not in my personality. I'm sorry. It's quite all right. It's just something in my nature. I have to think of my daughter, too. Come over by the fire. Sit down. Which do you prefer, electric or gas? For a fire, I mean. Well, there's no need to be rude. It was a civil question. I prefer gas. Or a log fire, of course. They have them in Switzerland. You got a headache? No. I didn't realize, of course, you had a lighter. You haven't got any cigarettes on you, I suppose? No. I'm very fond of a smoker. After dinner with a glass of wine, or before dinner, with sherry. You look as if you've had a night out. Where have you been? Had a nice time? You're quite, quite nice. And what do you do? I work in films. Films? Really? What do you do? Well, I'm, I'm an assistant director. Really? How funny. I used to be a continuity girl, but I gave it up. A pity. Yes, I'm beginning to think you're right. You meet such a good class of people. Of course, now you say you're an assistant director, I can see what you mean. I mean, I could tell the moment I met you that you had breeding. Oh, you looked a bit washed out, perhaps, but there was no mistaking the fact that you had breeding. You see, I'm extremely particular. I do like a certain amount of delicacy in men, a certain amount, well, a certain degree of refinement. You do see my point. Some men I couldn't possibly entertain, not even if I was starving. I don't want to be personal, but that word you used when you broke your lace, it made me shiver. I'm just not that type. Made me wonder if you were as well-bred as I thought. You do look hot. Why are you so hot? It's chilly. What are you looking at? Is that clock right? Yes. It's late. I suppose we might as well. I'm 
Haven't you got a cigarette? No. Oh, I know I had one somewhere. I knew I had. I have to hide them. The woman who comes in to do my room, she's very light-fingered. I don't know why she comes in at all. Nobody wants her. All she does is spy on me, but I'm obliged to put up with her. This room is serviced, which means I have to pay a pretty penny. It's a dreadful area, too. I'm thinking of moving. The neighborhood is full of people of no class at all. I just don't fit in. Is that quite right? People have told me you're the most distinguished people that I could go anywhere. You could go anywhere. They've told me you could be anything. Oh, I'm very well educated, you know. My my father was, he was a military man, in the army. Actually, it was a relief to speak to you. I haven't spoken to anyone for some hours. <coughs> Please don't do that, use your handkerchief. What's the matter with you? What have you been doing tonight? Nothing. Oh, really? Oh, excuse me. I haven't eaten all day. Hiccups come from not eating, don't they? You want one of these? I mean, I'm no different from any other girls, really. You know what I eventually heard? I've heard that respectable married women solicitors' wives go out when their husbands are out on business and pick men up. Isn't that fantastic? I mean, they're supposed to be, well, they're supposed to be respectable. Fantastic. I beg your pardon? I said it was fantastic. Dear, you're right, quite fantastic. One thing, though, there's, there's one thing that's always fascinated me. How far do men's girlfriends go? I've often wondered. Hmm? Well, it depends. Yes, I suppose it must. You mean on the girl? What? You mean it depends on the girl? Well, it would do, yeah. It's quite possible. I must admit that with your continuity, girls and secretaries, I don't see why you had to approach me. Have you been on the town tonight, then, for the continuity girl? You're a bit worried about continuity girls, aren't you? Oh, only because I've been one myself and know what the life no better than there should be. When were you at continuity? Oh, years ago. You're a bit nosy, aren't you? Sometimes I wish the night would never end. Like sleeping. I could sleep on and on. You can see the station from here. The trains go out all through the night. I suppose we might as well. It's a perfectly ordinary clock. I've seen too many people slip things into their pockets behind your back before now. Oh, nothing personal, of course. And mind your rash. Don't spill it all over the carpet. Here, here's an ashtray. Use it, please. I have to keep this carpet immaculate. Otherwise, the child lady, she's always looking for excuses for telling tales. Sit down. Sit down. Don't stand about like that. What are you staring at me for? your wife? Nowhere. And what film are you making at the moment? I'm on holiday. Where'd you work? I'm a freelance. You're rather young to be in such a high position, aren't you? Huh? You amuse me, you interest me. Of course, I'm a bit of a psychologist, you know. You're rather young to be. What you said you were, there's something childish in your face, almost retarded. I do like that word. I'm not being personal, of course, only psychological. Of course, I can see you're one for the girls. I don't know why you had to pick on me, though, at this time of night. Really rather forward of you. I'm a respectable mother, you know. With a child at boarding school, you couldn't call me anything else. All I do, I just entertain a few gentlemen now and again of my own choice. I mean, what girl doesn't? What do you think you're doing? Pick that up. 
Take that up, I tell you. It's my carpet. It's not my carpet. Don't make me pay for it. Treat it my bed like a big star. Let me go. You're burning my carpet. Oh, sit down. Oh, sit down. Now be quiet. 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 Oh, no, you don't. See this? See this? One crack. You know what? You, you, you talk too much. You know that? You, you never stop talking. You think that because you're a woman you can get away with me? You made a big, big mistake. You met the rough. You, you, you're all the same, you see? You're, you, you're all the same. You just, you're just a dead weight on my neck. What makes you say? What makes you think? What, 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 tell, tell me, yeah? Yeah. It's a shame about this business, about the clock in grandma's room. You know, there's always something. There's always something. My ex! I'll put it with a light! Please go, watch this step, watch this step, watch this step, watch this step! Oh, what, what's this step? I've, 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 Just about enough, okay? Hmm? Hmm? Say you're sorry, Albert. Why would you apologize, Albert? What would your father say, Albert? What would, what would, you know what I did? Don't be so frightened. Oh, don't, don't be so frightened. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you, that's all. <laughs> you haven't got any bleeding. Well, she hadn't either. Oh, oh my. what about those girls tonight? The same kind. And that one. <laughs> I didn't touch you. Oh, ah. oh what you been doing? I've oh, got, got just as many qualifications as the next man. Let's get that quite straight. <laughs> I, I got the answer to her, I got the answer to her, she tonight. I finished the conversation. I finished this. I finished her with this <laughs> clock. One clock from this clock. To <laughs> finish. Of course. Of course, I loved her, really. It's your daughter. It's a photo of your daughter, is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Huh? Huh? Class three classical, third prize, bronze medal, Twickenham competition, 19, 1933. You liar. That's you! It's not! That's not your daughter, it's you! It's a fake! It's a year to lies! Just come, you filthy scum! Hey, do you mind how you talk to me? My daughter. A little girl, a little baby girl. Get up. Get up. Come on. Walk up with you. Come on. Come on. Turn around. <laughs> I'll walk over to that window. Go on. Go on, do something, Tony. Do something, Tony. I'm giving the oldest man here. Go on. What do you want me to do? Just keep your big mouth closed for a start. Hmm? <laughs> Cover your face. That's right, that's right. Hey, right, those shoes, big one. Go on, pick them up. Go on, go on, go on. Go on, pick them up. Pick them up! Oh, we're going to bring them over here. Go on. Go on, bring them over here. Come on. Oh, that's right, that's right. It's more like it. It's more like it. Put them on. Come on, put them on. Come on, put them on. Come on, 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 right on. Doesn't matter about the lace being broken, it'll tie up. Go on, go on, put it on, go on. No, it's, it's very good, very good. Come on. It's cold, isn't it? Freeze. Fire's gone. What's that? That looks like light. Mm. Mm. Oh, freezing, isn't it? Mm, what, a, what a dump. Oh, I'm not staying here. I'm getting out of this dump. Do mm. that. Mm. Mm. You mind how you talk to me? You do the ding ding ding.
Do you know what the time is? Where have you been? I don't know what to say to you, Albert. To raise your hand to your own mother. You've never done that before in your life. To threaten your own mother. That clock would have hurt me, Albert, and you'd... I know you'd have been very sorry. Aren't I a good mother to you? Everything I do is for your own good. You should know that. You're all I've got. Oh, look at you. You look washed out. Oh, you look... Don't know what could have come of you. Listen, Albert, listen. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to forget it, you see? I'm going to forget all about it. You'll have your holiday in a fortnight, and we can go away. We'll go away together. It's not as if you're a bad boy, Albert. You're not. You're a good boy. I know you are. It's not as if you're really bad. You're a good boy. You're not a bad boy. I know you're not. You're good. But you're not bad. You're a good boy. I know you are. You are.